Back at it again, round two, guys. Been a little crazy picking up a second job, so give a thumbs up. Helps me out a ton. And let's get it. So anything you guys want to see particularly, please drop it in the comment down below. But this video, we're going to start talking about the lists, colors, and layers. Now, before we can talk about all that stuff, we got to talk about labels. So most of the Kodi menu controls are in text. So movies, music, browse, etc. So nothing to worry about, but something just to be aware of. When you go through the, the code, you're going to see under this uh, list view item here, you're going to see a label is going to have something called localize. So th the issue is that Kodi is a global application, so it's going to be written in multiple languages. The way to handle that is sort of to have separate labels for every single language. Two ways of doing this. Kodi has their own built-in um, labels, so sort of like a language file based on, and it doesn't install every single language file, only what's, you know, what the region is, is set to, like you're installing it for, like here in the US, we've only got English installed. So that's just something to be aware of when you come across this. Um, this is just going to be this thing. It's under program files. This is sort of like the root stuff, like the more common things like movies, etc. But then there's, um, for anything that's more like uncommon that that's special to this Cody skin. There's going to be a, a section here on the on the left hand side. It says languages. Uh, it's broken down to like resources, and these are going to be separate like language files. So you can see they have their own resource number, uh, the localized number, and then they have their own text. So every single language is going to have a different strings file with those that same like uh, that same code, localized code, but a different text. And honestly, don't worry about it right now. You could simply when you add new um, items in a like a list you're you could just hard code the label for now but something just to be aware of when you kind of come across this and down the road right before you publish it's best to put all of your labels in the uh the localized section in the uh the language section and one more important thing to note real quick um might be common sense for a lot of people but for those new to this <clears throat> this is basically going to have a parent child node architecture. So similar to HTML, you're going to have something like a root tag, like a parent tag, like tables, and it's going to have child components as is in this case, like table rows. So <clears throat> code is going to be a very similar concept. You could see here, if I scroll all the way up, you're going to see that uh, you have this list view here. It's just going to be con a control type with a fixed list. And here are all the parameters, focus, layout, etc. And then where it actually comes down to stuff, it has... Um, under content, this is where you store all of the uh, child components. So this is just sort of something to be aware of, guys. And because of this, um, most of these text editors that use XML, for instance, lets you sort of collapse some of these components for you. So for instance, this item component here has all these uh, sections here, child components. You could just simply collapse it. So this is sort of a neat trick when you want to sort of make the code easier to read and sort of hide away stuff that's not necessary. But it's all kind of grouped together, so it's really a really cool thing to work with. All right, so let's just dive right in. You can, we're gonna just tackle this, take it apart little by little. So what you guys can see here is that when you scroll right now, it sort of hides away the top row. And the reason for that is because it's a fixed list. So we're gonna go to the control type here, which is, this is it, fixed list. We're gonna delete fixed and just make this a list. Click on save, reload. And you're going to notice that as I scroll down, it, the movies, at, like the stuff just does not like hide away. So that's one little technique to do here. Um, another thing to do that I personally was needed to have in my, my code was that when you scroll to the right, you're going to notice that um, whatever was highlighted on the left goes away. So we're going to do a quick change to fix that because I don't want to hide that away. A um, couple things here is what this is called, the reason for this is animation now you guys could do what you want with it i'm not an expert at animation and i'm not really going to use it i don't really care for it i don't care for that at all i have i want nothing to do with animation because i'm going to refresh this so you notice that if i scroll to the right boom now, the stuff is still highlighted. You see movies, so that's a section that's currently selected. I don't know why they removed that, but whatever, not a big deal. So if I move my mouse around, boom, still there, roasted. Another cool thing about Kodi is layers. We're gonna break it apart a bit more. So you can see here, there's this include file here under this whole group here. So this include 
This is kind of a really cool, neat trick. If you don't want to repeat your code, you have a lot of visual elements that are going to repeat. So what this is essentially doing is basically putting, taking this from another file. So there's this includes file that has content panel. And that's great and all, but we're not going to want to show it in this case. Um, and, you know, there's includes for specific things like home and et, et cetera, but I'm probably going to cover that in another video if I find a use case. For now, I'm going to show you that this is all layers. I'm just going to remove it um, right now and click on save. So you're going to notice here on the left hand side, you see this black uh, area behind all this text. I'm going to hit refresh. Boom, it is gone. So that's the magic of layers. So we're not stopping there. We're basically going to start covering. I'm going to do a quick intro to button themes, colors, etc. So there's kind of two ways of doing this. You could have like a, like an image of the button itself. If you really want to get fancy, like with gradients, because that's just not out of the box. But for simple stuff like colors, um, just coloring in a whole box, I'm going to show you guys a quick demo of that. So the way that the uh, the button visuals look is that under the scroll up here, you've got this list control type, right? Like remember how I mentioned that this is all the parameters for these control types. So you've got a section for focus layout and that's basically for any button that's on focus and then item layout. This is for all the other buttons. We're going to make all this, all these buttons look like this. And then we're going to change the main button as this. All right. So you guys are going to notice here that everything is the same here. Like I said, I just literally copied everything from the focus layout, the whole, um, layout here and I put it into item layout. So something to note here, if you go down here, you're going to see something called texture. And this is sort of how we control colors and visuals and such. So you're going to notice a few things here. There's an image here that sort of everything has to have an image. Um, so you can have like uh, something kind of crazy with gradients and such here. It's just like a regular black image. You can see there's a shadow here. Um, or then there's this image here that says list um, slash focus. So that's just like a plain Jane image that we're going to work off of. But then this here, this just show, this is another button here, an image that shows the uh, the art file. So you can see here like the icons here on the left. So that's what this is kind of coming from right there. And then the color diffuse is sort of the color to fill in this blank canvas right here. So I'm going to skip along here and do a really quick cheat code. So I'm going to set these And when I did a refresh, you're going to see the highlighted one is going to be a completely different color. Now, um, because this is for the focus layout, a couple things to note here. You're going to notice the color diffuse has a weird character here, but these over here have something called button focus. Now, cool thing about Cody is that uh, you get to change themes within the, the skin. So if you go to here on the left hand side colors, it's going to be under defaults. This is where you set the primary colors and everything else and, you know, button focus and everything. Um, so obviously in this case, I just sort of hard coded it, but this is sort of the preferred way of doing it. So you can have different um, options for different themes. So thing to note here is a six digit RGB hex, hexadecimal, two, three, three, four, five, six. So two digits are per R, per color R, G, and B. And then, the, but then the first two here are going to be the alpha channel. Now, basically, this basically sets your uh, transparency. So I'm going to set this to 22. Go back here, and you're going to notice that it's a lot more transparent. It still exists. You just see that it's it's just still blue, but tinted, very lightly tinted. So maybe I'll set the 55. You'll notice it there. Yep, a little darker there. So I'm going to just revert that to the four. And so guys, this is kind of where we get to do a lot of cool things. You could, uh, if you want something gradient, you're going to have to choose, create your own like a uh, button, just a black button with different, you know, visuals. So you can see this has a shadow. So this is where I'll probably cover this in another video, but yeah, so that's one way of doing things. This is just a plain Jane image here. So that's what I use in this case. And something else to note here is that you're going to notice it says, uh, focus up PNG. Now here's kind of where things get tricky is that most of this stuff, you're not going to find it. It's going to be here. If you can't find it, it's going to be under this media folder. And these are where the, um, the texture files are now texture files were important because in the past it was sort of a pain, um, you know, back in like the early two thousands performance was kind of lacking. So they had to optimize performance for Cody or 
back then XBMC. So they put all these images and compress it into a texture file. That's kind of how video games work too, is they sort of put their all their uh, images into texture files. So there's a tool that's sort of supposed to compress and decompress that stuff. And I've had a uh, having a pretty hard time decrypting it for some reason. I just un unpacking it. It just isn't outputting anything for some unknown reason. But yeah, usually this tool is supposed to sort of pack and unpack the context of this XBT file. So, and from what I've kind of understood, this isn't really a big deal anymore. You could technically put the images uh, somewhere like maybe in media folder or this and that, but um, that's just something to note, guys. So that way, um, if you do notice some performance um, impacts, you sort of, and you like the way the visuals look so far, you could technically put um, those images you work with and pack them into an XPT file. So that's just something to be aware of um, down the road if you get more advanced and really want to build out a lot of visuals. One more final thing to note, you can notice here on the left-hand side that there's um, this is sort of la on the left hand, this little box here is darker than the rest of them. That's where you get to, you get to stack um, items on top of each other and they, the darkness, they get to sort of become darker over, over another. So that's just another cool thing to note when you're working with, with these visuals is, is that the layers sort of add color and complexity. But uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I'll, some of the stuff that I worked on on my other skin is that I, I added layers with some transparencies. So that's a good thing to note. Last thing I'm going to talk about is layers. So I kind of already talked about it a little bit in this video, but just to kind of show you guys real quick, you can see that uh, the background here is a, a playing video that's kind of paused and put in the background. <clears throat> so all that's being done is that it's got an includes here. So this is sort of under the name default background. I'm going to go here. It's going to be... So everything's sort of like stacked. You can see this is sort of... Um, uh, really high up in the chain. So what what happens here is that this is sort of going to be the uh, <clears throat> all the, the the basic stuff from from top to bottom. So it almost like layers on like a sandwich. So this is the very very beginning, and it just kind of defaults to the original defaults. The original includes XML here. So here's where we kind of set all this other stuff here. Video window that's going to be in the background and visualizations, and then you've got um. This is where you could set like the background as well. What we're gonna do here is going to be changing up the, the video backgrounds so instead of a whole full screen, we're gonna just change some parameters. So as you can see here, I just refreshed it. So instead of putting the whole depth and everything here. I think depth is responsible for the, the fading as well, I'm not sure, but you can see it's sort of coming up on, a, on the back left there. And usually if you want this to sort of be, um, take more focus on top of other things, you sort of have to rearrange stuff on the stack. Final thing to cover, so if I keep scrolling all the way down here, you're gonna see this include colored background images. Holy goose chase, guys, it's crazy. So I go, I found that includes in the same file, and here's where you get to set the uh, the image background as you'd like. So here, and then color diffuse primary background that's based on the theme. So this is where you can change the color of the gradient or whatever black image you have. So um, I don't really have that set up, but you guys kind of get the picture in a nutshell. Something I just remembered, guys. I um, before I leave you guys some other quick stuff you can sort of. Uh, work with down the road so you still have the control to sub move this list around because this is a group and it has these common controls here left top width etc and also you've got this list view here so you can sort of add stuff here on the fly so let's say we add something like a, a settings button here I'm just going to copy one of these real quick and I'll just do it to the top so we can see it quicker right I'm just gonna put it to the top here and indent this. I'm gonna just, for now, I'm gonna hard code this and say settings. We're gonna take out visibility because we just want this to always show. And we're just going to do a quick, quick feature here. And so let's say we wanna activate, uh, this is how their way of navigating stuff is to do activate window and then the name of that window. So we will just copy this whole 
item here. We're going to go back to what I just created. So let's say you maybe want to eliminate that whole row of buttons on the top here, which you can. It is, uh, here we go, settings. So when you unclick, we'll just do settings. Hit refresh. And you can see if I just click on settings here, boom, takes us to the settings menu. So that's kind of a cool thing. When you want to add and remove stuff, you have to look at that activate menu. That's that on click function. I hope this video's been helpful, guys. So um, yeah, a lot of cool stuff that you can get started with.